like a lot of people nowadays, I've digitised all my CDs, put them into iTunes and I can play them around the house using a Sonos system. But that doesn't mean that I don't have an appreciation for older music technology as well. Now in this video we're going to be looking at a couple of formats that didn't quite take off. We've got the Philips DCC, that's the Digital Compact Cassette. And we've also got the Sony L Cassette. We'll start off looking at that one first. The concept makes quite a lot of sense. Back in 1976, an audio cassette sounded terrible, but a reel-to-reel -reel sounded excellent. What Sony wanted to do was use the same tape that's in a reel-to-reel, quarter-inch tape, and put it inside a handy cassette format. Now I say handy, they're quite large. Let me show you what one looks like. An L cassette's tape is twice the width of the tape in a compact cassette, that's a quarter of an inch versus an eighth of an inch, and it also runs at twice the speed at 3.75 inches per second, which explains why it's so large. It's got a couple of neat little features. These tabs on the corner can be pressed down as right protection, and you can push them back up again, of course, if you want to. Um, and it's got a braking mechanism to stop the tape unspooling when it's not in use. You can't twist those around until you push this bit up in the bottom. And of course that gets pushed in by the machine once you put the tape in it. The tape itself is here in the top and these bits are spring loaded and when they go in the machine they pop up so the tape is accessible because what happens is the tape gets pulled out of the machine as a little thing goes in there and it pulls it into the machine and it plays it there rather than a compact cassette where it would push it against the cassette itself. Now you might think that that's upside down if you're used to normal compact cassettes which would look more appropriate that way up. But in an L cassette the tape comes out of the top of it. Other than a short promotional tape that Sony released to dealers to sell the L cassette, there are no pre-recorded albums on this format, so you've got to record your own things. I put a couple of SACDs onto this tape because I wanted to get the best quality audio possible. Now whilst the L cassette is comically large, they've actually done quite a few clever things to get this tape into something so small. The reel on the right running at 7.5 inches per second holds about the same as the tape on the left and they both sound about the same quality. The tape has a special formulation that's more akin to video tape and it's a lot thinner than the reel-to-reel -reel tape. The reel-to-reel -reel tape can be handled without damaging it and it's unlikely to snap, whereas the tape in one of these is very fragile. Now there's a Type 1 and a Type 2 tape here. The Type 2 is more like your sort of posh chrome type tapes and your Type 1 is your standard one. Both of these are sealed in their packets. It's incredibly hard to get hold of any L cassettes and that's something that will put anyone off if they're interested in this format because there's no point having a machine without any blank tape for it. I've managed to get hold of some but it took me a while. One thing I like about them, it's all designed so you don't touch the tape with it being so fragile. So this little piece of card pops into there to enable you to pull it out of the box without touching any of the tape. Unfortunately, due to the age of these, about 40 years old, the sticky back stuff on the label isn't really sticking. And I've also had some sort of squeaks on the tapes, which is not uncommon. But you can take out these screws, take the two sides of the tape apart. And I've found that if I lubricate the real area with some WD-40, that stops the squeaking. It's just because the lubrication's dried out with them being so old. Compared to a normal audio cassette, you can see the difference in size. It's actually quite funny really. Now if you compare it to something like a videotape, you can see that it's a little bit smaller than a videotape, so it's somewhere between an audio cassette and a video cassette size. It's a shame that these never really took off because they sound excellent. I'll switch on my system here. Unfortunately I can't really play you back anything because it's all copyright, but uh, just listen for a second. The machine you're looking at here is a Sony EL5. It's perhaps the best selling of the Sony L cassette machines, but I don't really know how many it sold. In the end, they ended up dumping them all in Norway in 1980. But in 1975, this was the height of technology. Massive, big VU meters, lovely paddle switches, metal knobs and dials, a full logic control cassette mechanism, so there was no piano keys. These nice little lights above the individual keys as well. 
I'll take the door off this one. The door's supposed to be removed because then you'll be able to see inside it a little bit better and see how the tape is pulled into the mechanism. Right, we'll just pop the tape back in again and uh, what I'll do, I'll press play and if you look at the top right you'll see this little silver thing pop up and that pulls the tape against the top of the machine. Now there is a Sony EL7 which has three heads in it which would be record, erase and play. This one only has the two heads but still it's an absolutely gorgeous piece of 1970s technology and monstrously large as well, it's as big as my amplifier. And whilst we're on the subject, I better mention what this is because I know someone will ask. It's a Pioneer SX3600 receiver from 1980. Now for those people that don't know, receivers are amplifiers with built-in radio receivers, hence the name. And of course radio still works as good as it ever did. And this one's particularly good at picking up decent quality signals. Now being from 1980, we've moved over from the needle VU meters into these fluorescent ones. Now I do prefer the older needle ones, but actually I do think these look pretty cool as well. Right, let's get back on topic and look at the Philips DCC. This was launched in the early 90s, at the same time as Sony launched their mini disc. Mini disc was a lot more successful but at that time, the DCC actually sounded a lot better because it used a better compression format. Now this pack I've got here was issued to retailers at the time so they could demonstrate the sound quality improvements compared to a normal audio cassette. Now sound quality is part of it, but actually the packaging is an awful lot nicer as well. I'll show you an album I've got on both DCC and standard audio cassette to show you what I mean. This is a normal audio cassette. You've got a few of these in your house, probably in the loft somewhere. You might have thrown them all out. There were quite a few problems with the packaging for normal audio cassette albums. It wasn't particularly attractive, but of course it was cheap. These little plastic cases quite often snapped off at the hinges and they've all got very sharp uh, edges on them and sharp corners. And the cassettes rattle as well. Not particularly impressive. A DCC is an awful lot better. There's a space on the back here for some more album art that you don't get on a normal audio cassette. And also the tape slides out of the top here and you can see the art is actually on the cassette itself. This side has got a slider which covers the sprocket holes and also where the tape is so you can't damage the tape when you hold it in your hand. There's also room on this side for a bit more information about what it is that's on the tape. So overall a much nicer package. Now inside the box here the back slides out that's where your little booklet is that might have lyrics or uh, junk on there and a little bit of art on the back of that as well. Now this bit in the back here actually slides out. You don't generally do this but I'm showing you that there is actually something inside here as well. If you open it up, there's a bit of information there about DCCs. It tells you what features are on this particular one, whether it's AAD or ADD or whatever, and that it's got text mode on it and things like that. The back here has a little bit of a, a slidey bit there, so you can put the booklet down inside it without it uh, getting in the way of the cassette, and then the cassette goes in front of that. As you can see, it just pops in there and it holds it in tight. It doesn't fall out. It's got a nice little uh, bit there that just holds the tape in. All the edges are rounded off, really smooth and comfortable. It actually feels uh, really nice. The design on this is excellent. It's a shame it didn't really take off, but there are a number of reasons why. It just wasn't that convenient. Philips's big plan to get people to upgrade to digital compact cassette revolved around the fact that the players would be able to play your old audio cassettes, but if you wanted to make new recordings, you could only make them onto blank DCCs. They wouldn't record onto the old audio cassettes. You can still get hold of blank DCCs pretty easily. On the back of this one, you can see it claims that a DCC recorded on an 18-bit player actually sounds a little bit better than CD. Effectively, DCC recorded in MP1 format, which is, a, of course, an earlier variant of our MP3 that we're still using nowadays. 
as you can see the DCC cassette has very sort of notches around it to tell it what kind of cassette you're putting in the machine it's all very much one-sided as the pre-recorded ones are you only use it one way up there's a little notch here where you can put a right protect tab on it which protects the whole thing it's not got one either side like a normal cassette would have had because again it's all designed pretty much like a one-sided tape you don't look at that side you just look at that side now one of the things that attracts me to the DCC is the fact that there are pre-recorded albums available in the format and it's still possible to get hold of some that are still shrink wrapped and unused. I've got a few from the Netherlands on eBay and they are pretty expensive though but it's not too hard to get hold of all the ones you're interested in because the catalogue's pretty limited. Now I mentioned before that the tapes are pretty much one-sided much the same as a CD as you can see here there's all 14 tracks laid out there it doesn't say side A and side B now the cassette itself does a lot of clever maneuvering to get to those tracks I'll show you how it works inside this player here this is my backup player it's an 18 bit Philips player it's one of the last two that they made this one's a little bit scratched up which is why it's my backup player but I can show you things a little bit better on this table here now when you put a tape in a machine it tries to find out what's on that tape there is a data track on there that it tries to read but if the tape's right at the beginning it can't see it so what you have to do you have to press play so the tape moves on a little bit and gets onto the first track you can see here it'll start trying to fast forward to the first track when it realizes that there's nothing on the tape at the moment and then once it gets there it's able to read that data track which tells it what the current track is and how many other tracks there are on the album etc so what you can do here we can press the text button and we can see that there's a track title on there and if we press the button again we can see the artist information and uh, press it again the name of the album now the next press it says lyrics now I can imagine there's supposed to be lyrics scrolling across I don't know how they really get it to sync in with a tape but I've never found a tape yet that has lyrics on it now if we try and get to a track here let's go to uh, jamming at number 14 which effectively should be on the other side of the tape side B to where we are so what the tape does it'll try and find it now it knows where it is there's some sort of clever stuff going on but it does a heck of a lot of clunking around it goes fast forward in and realizes it's in the wrong place and rewinds and it flips the tape head around so it can play the other side of the tape uh, it's a pretty complicated mechanism there's actually a lot of charm to it i like the fact that it's really struggling to play the next track i find that quite entertaining uh, but it's certainly not instant access but it's doing the best job it can apparently dcc players are particularly good at playing the old compact cassettes as well of course they've got all the buttons you need to better skip forward and back to the next track and it's got auto reverse and you can flip sides and things but it's the playheads that are particularly good so I've heard when I've been reading online and I'll admit they do sound better in this than they have in any of my other compact cassette playing machines so this machine is the Philips DCC 730 it's an 18-bit machine which is one of the ones that Philips released at the end of the format's life it was like the last gasp on the back of it you can see you've got analog ins and you've also got digital ins coax and optical now I've also got a portable player here a portable recorder as well I suppose it doesn't work very well the battery's not really working in it you can see the size of the thing all the rubber's worn off this so all the labeling for the buttons gone but just to give you an idea of what one of these looks like that's a chunky little device there it does still work if I put a cassette in you have to put it in the uh, lid here close it down I've attached some power onto it and as you can see it is playing away but you can understand why people prefer the mini disc as a portable format and accessing tracks takes forever on this thing now here's the machine I've got in the lounge this is the Philips 951 this is my top of the range Philips machine again an 18-bit machine released right at the end of the format's life now to my old ears a DCC tape sounds as good as a CD or in some cases slightly better but I'm not advocating people go and get a DCC or an L cassette or even start playing 8 tracks again this is just something that I find entertaining playing back 
music through unusual or old formats that a lot of people have never seen or heard before. So people come round to my house, I'll play them something on an 8-track or through my DCC or through the L cassette and they'll be fascinated by it. So there's a lot more to music than just the music itself. The equipment that plays it back tells part of the story as well and I get a lot of pleasure out of listening to music through unusual and ancient equipment. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.